the the analysis behind intelligent governance is we have two a uh, double movement going on today both globally and within societies uh, you'll have global interdependence which requires uh, uh, an institutional capacity to manage the links of interdependence um, and you have more complexity within society generally because societies are growing more diverse uh, after the Industrial Revolution, everything was standardized. Now we have the Information Revolution, particularly social media. Society is becoming more participatory. People are demanding more meaningful participation, whether in, in uh, the U.S. with the Occupy Movement or Tea Party, or in Egypt with the, with the Tyre Square or Indignados in Spain. You have pressure from below to, for people to participate more in the way their lives are governed, yet you have at the same time the need to hold the whole system together and to manage it. So you need institutional capacity. So governance has a double challenge, which is to manage and have more participation at the same time. So uh, intelligent governance is uh, a way to try to respond institutionally to that challenge through devolving power towards the grassroots, through involving uh, citizens meaningfully in the way they govern their lives and their communities and their cities and areas in which they have competence but also being able to delegate in a legitimate way authority to institutions that can manage the big links of interdependence, whether it's at the G20 level, whether it's at, now we have mega cities which are linked in many different ways around the world to each other to manage those links. You have to have both. So intelligent governance, governance requires a knowledgeable democracy, a citizenry that can participate but also is competent in the areas it participates in, and also uh, an accountable meritocracy. Meritocracy means knowledge base, consensus building, long-term horizon institutions that are rooted in popular sovereignty, but insulated from the direct influence of electoral politics in which special interests and short-term mentality tend to dominate. So intelligent governance tries to respond to this double challenge and to find a mechanism of scale that allows participation and management of the integrated links of interdependence together. That's intelligent governance. What is an intelligence in the context of governance? I mean, it's um, understanding knowledge of the situation, uh, having the ability to look forward, and then have, having the ability to uh, adapt to make changes. And um, what's interesting in societies all around the world is that um, those three elements um, are, we, we, we think, key, but because of cultural and ideological um, uh, limitations, some of, one of those, or combination of those, uh, have difficulties, meaning what's the assessment in an ideological environment, uh, how much uh, planning can be made uh, in a let's say populist environment where you you know you've got elections, and then how much uh, how great is the ability to make let's say tough choices in an environment again that's highly politicized and let's say fairly short term. The other side, you've got environments where um, uh, the government is better able to uh, probably carry out long term uh, uh, planning. Uh, on the other hand it um, is much more removed from the, maybe the assessment part, meaning the understanding part, because uh, citizens uh, are somewhat removed from uh, the government. This is in authoritar authoritarian regimes. So the, what I think the whole idea of uh, intelligent governance is to have these three elements interact with each other and build on each other to make um, society um, uh, better able to respond, better able to plan for the next generations. So that's sort of the, the sort of the idea behind uh, marrying uh, intelligent uh, intelligence and governance.